Welcome to the 12th house. I'm Michelle Palazon, your host and the head witch in charge at Holisticism, and I am delighted for our team episode today. We have Stacey Coughlin, who is our social media expert maven witch, and the lovely Wallace, our content witch, who you know and love. So it's going to be a fun one, and we are talking about social media and holisticism and digital altars because, oh my God, so many of you really liked our episode on digital altars that I recorded a couple weeks ago. And we wanted to double click on the concept and talk a little bit more about it because you were fascinated. And I'm really happy to hear that. I love when I get like a hundred messages uh, from people saying, Oh my God, that totally clicked for me. I've never thought about it that way before. It like really gets me, gets me going. And we pulled in Stacy because she's way better at talking about social media than I am because she's way better at social media than I am. And I reference it briefly in this episode, but I ran Holisticism's Instagram for the last four years and hired Stacy three months ago to come and help us sort of execute and take it to the next level. And if you are a business owner, a small business owner, you probably understand my position or, or maybe you're running your own social media right now, like sort of rolling your eyes and also doing it because you need to. And while I think publicly, I would say, and I have said many times before that I'm not an expert in social media and I'd stand by that. I'm not bad at it. And I didn't realize really until I hired Stacy and had to basically explain to her how I've been doing our social media for so long and my approach to it, that I actually have a pretty defined method to how I use social and how I use it in an esoteric and also practical way. So how we think about spellcasting through the digital ethers and are the archetypes that we're portraying online. And that had pretty much been something inside of my brain for a really long time by myself because I never worked on it with anybody else. And so when I heard Stacy and we started talking about it and I started passing off that workflow to her, it started to really solidify all these beliefs and ideas and sort of frameworks that I created for myself that I follow. But when I had to explain them to somebody else, all of a sudden it was like, oh, duh, of course that's what that is. It was almost like, you know, Michelangelo's David was coming out of the marble. Like it was always there. It's just that I needed to sort of take a, a hammer <laughs> and, and sort of crack it away. And Stacy, thankfully, just like totally, she's so intuitive. She totally understood and just like has elevated our social media and our spell casting on social media beyond even, you know, where it started when I, when I was working on it. And I'm so grateful to her for that. So that's what we talk about in today's episode. We talk about spellcasting through digital ethers, spellcasting through your social media, and really how social media can be fun. And I do think that, you know, it takes some effort and it, it takes some like conscientious thought, just like any sort of spellcasting does. I say this a lot because one of my witch teachers said it and it stuck with me. You can't multitask and do magic. And I think that's really true and often why social media feels exhausting because it's a full-time job. And if you're doing a lot of other stuff in your business, you're basically multitasking, right? And it's very difficult to think about the out, the desired outcome that you want and work towards it while you're doing social and also like do the rest of your business. So we talk also in this episode about how to bring all those elements together to make sure that your emails, your content, your podcasts, your blog posts, the products and services that you're putting out into the world, how your social media ties that together and the spells you cast with your social media amplify all the work that you're doing because that's how your content should work, right? It should all amplify, everything should amplify each other and there should be no redundancies. Everyone in my notion for magical bodies, spells and systems class knows this. No redundancies. There are no redundancies in nature and there's no waste in nature, right? Same thing in our business practices. There should be no redundancies and no waste. We want to model our own systems after nature systems. So we talk about that in today's episode and also why Stacey's so amazing and our archetype on social. And I hope you enjoy today's episode. Hello and welcome to the 12th House Podcast. I am Michelle Palazon, your co-host and the head witch in charge at Holisticism. And today I am joined by two of our lovely team members at Holisticism. Hello, I'm Wallace. 
an old hat here on the pod. <laughs> I thought you were going to say old hag, and I was like, yeah, get it. That's Own more, it, babe. <laughs> more appropriate. I, I did see, this is just a side tangent, but FUBU in the vintage section at a store the other day. I was like, wow, I'm really old now. So, old hag here on the pod. <laughs> And excited to introduce one of our newest team members and social media goddess queen. How would you like to be referred, dear Stacey? I would absolutely say I'm the social media maven. Maven. Okay, here we go. Well, welcome, Stacey, to the podcast. We are doing this episode in honor of you to intro you to the community and talk about digital altars because who else other than our social media maven stacy welcome thank you so much i'm so excited to be here hi everyone stace tell the world a little bit about you in a tiny tiny nutshell tiny nutshell i am a taurus sun sag moon and rising so that says all you need to know about me I studied vocal jazz and music and musical theater. That's my educational background. And I ended up in the world of client experience in luxury beauty, burnt out, and ended up magically finding my way into a content creation social media manager role probably about seven years ago. And everything changed from there. All it took was one amazing woman to say, you are really bad at the job I hired you for, but you are so good at this other thing. <laughs> and everything That's changed. Great. Yeah. That's a sign of a good manager. A good manager puts people where they shine and in their area of natural genius, as opposed to trying to force them into some job description. So, well, yep. thank God you have that amazing manager because you are truly goddess's gift to holisticism, it feels like, because I had been searching high and low for many years for a social media manager and my, I don't know, controlling, maybe we could say, Scorpio-ish, my Capricorn, Jupiter, and Saturn placements were like, no, no one else can do this job. No one's good enough for this job. And finally, I kind of reached my bandwidth limit and went on a search on a hunt to find someone who could take over the role and you blew us away you sent in a notion document and it was beautiful and wonderful and i'm pretty sure you also made a loom video walking me through the entire thing which was so impressive and we were like oh man she's got it in the bag like <laughs> pretty sure that like unless she outs herself as a serial killer we're per we're gonna hire her and look at now we're three months down the line and Look Just at us now. Love and life. Also, I'd like to add for all the people in the back who can't see Stacy, your hair is a different color, I'm pretty sure, every time we talk. And you show up with luxurious beauty. I did not know that you used to work in luxury beauty and your eyeshadow is just popping off the screen. It shows up everywhere. And when you sent us your notion document to apply for the role, you sent a little digital altar to us yep. and yeah. brought us in. It's true. Your that world. is true. I didn't even think about that, that it was a little like altar space of, I mean, a little backstory for, for people who have not been following along with my personal story. I had joined the North Node in January mm -hmm. and I was like manifesting a job working. I was like, somehow I am going to be working with holisticism. And when that, when that job came through, and I started creating that notion board. It was like the first time that I was excited about communication with community through the digital spheres or realms. I had some PTSD, lowercase t drama from the last social media job I was in. Turns out I was working for like a, a secret QAnon. Yeah. No. Yeah. I didn't know that. Yeah. I was working for. Only in 2020. Was it 2020? It was, no, it was, it was actually not tw like it was pre panty oh. and it was one of those things where I started yeah, working. You and on. Yeah. I was brought on because she was like, your voice is the voice that I want for my brand. And then very quickly started like censoring everything I was saying, super passive aggressive. And then I found out that she was like a, like a secret conservative, save the children QAnon supporter. And I was so traumatized from that entire experience that I was like, I guess social media isn't for me. And so when I created that notion document for you, for my like application, I was up 
so late because I just like got in flow and it was so creative and it was so fun. And that is the definition of like alignment for me when you're creating content and it's like three o'clock in the morning and you're like, oh my God, okay, I got to go to bed. Like, this is amazing. So it was so much fun. I'm getting full body chills, waves of full body chills because that is feels so true and resonates deeply and truth tingles truth tingles because that is aligned you're right and I remember when you dm'd me when the job listing went up and you're like just wait a couple more days I am finishing up this document but I am in it and just please wait don't don't make any decisions yet I'm going to apply and I kind of was like is she gonna apply or is she like is she not going to should I wait and then it was worth it you were worth the wait so, and here we are. Slid into the DMs. I didn't even know that. I like your style. You're like, heads up, I'm coming. Get ready for me. <laughs> well, yeah, I have to say that that has been mirrored in my experience after coming on the team of like things just being easy, fun, aligned, and like really fucking magical. <laughs> Yeah, we're really lucky. <laughs> we're really lucky. We have a very magical crew team yeah. and a very magical crew listening and participating with us. So it's great. It makes everything, all the like little bumps in the road, like totally worthwhile because of how much synchronicity there is. So, but before I start crying, let's talk about digital altars. <laughs> let's do it. You know what though? Those tears have a spot on the altar sometimes. That's that's true. Great That's segue. true. So what is a digital altar, Stace? How would you describe it? Well, the way that I look at our digital altar and the, the spaces that I sort of curate and create for and from, I think of it as our offerings to our amazing online community and our spiritual community. So I really look at it as a place where I am hosting like the seance or like the coven meeting and it's daily. Sometimes it's hourly. Mm -hmm. And I really look at our digital altar as all of the offerings that we give up to the physical realm, the digital realm, the energetic realm. And then also, yeah, that, that spiritual side. So I spend a lot of time online and looking at our specifically our Instagram as our digital altar allows the entire process to feel magical. What about you, Michelle? Thanks for turning that back around on me. I really appreciate it. <laughs> yeah. I, I mean, digital altar, I think I've, I've always kind of thought of the digital realm and the internet as an alternate universe where we get to create I think of the, let me go back. I think about the Akashic Records like a lot, a shit ton, and how everything, every action, every word, every idea sort of gets like stored, even if it doesn't get said out loud or if it doesn't happen out loud, gets stored in this Akasha. And I I picture the Akasha as like a layer of dust. You know, like if you walked into a, a room that was covered in dust, if you walked past it, maybe the dust would like kick up just a little bit. There'd be a little bit of an imprint. And that's how I feel like the whole world is, and especially the digital world. It seems to me that we have more of those imprints and sort of dust kickups that happen and also ways that we get to sort of create and meld and and mold that world if we choose to. And so much of how people perceive us and what we're asking for and the outcomes that we want come from the way that we set up our digital spaces. Spaces have intelligence to them, including digital spaces. They can give people information. They can tell people secrets. They can control the way that people act or react, not because they're controlling them. People still have free will, but they can direct action. So if we put a button right above, I don't know, a really cute GIF, that might get someone to click on that. It makes it much more likely that someone will click on that button. They still have free will. They don't have to. But because of the way we've created this space intelligently, we're making it easier for our desired outcome to manifest. And when I think about digital altars, really, like when I think, Stacy, when I probably left you a very frantic voice, voice note, and I was like, so super glad that you're on the team now. By the way, I treat the space as a digital altar. So <laughs> anyways, <laughs> I don't know, this is kind of weird, but like, let me tell you how I think about it. And maybe you can make it like a little bit more 
real and not just in my head. And we can actually make like a system around it. So it's not just me moving intuitively in this space anymore. And that means really treating Instagram or our website or any digital space like an altar space, putting gifts and offerings, being in right relationship with whatever we're asking for, or the community that we're coming to, or the deities that we're asking for a request from, and truly being in relationship, not giving too much without asking, and also like asking for the right thing and asking for the right things from the right people. If you ask for, I don't know, like buttloads of cash from Pluto, Pluto's going to be like, how about some death instead? I, I don't think people think about social media in that way. I think we kind of assume it's going to give us everything that we want if we can just sort of hack it or figure out the secret code that it's going to get us millions of followers and millions of dollars and acclaim and everything will be easy and everyone will love us. And that's not actually true. And there's so many different like flavors of what we can create on that space, but we have to be really intentional about it. One of the episodes that was so impactful for me of the pod was with Old Ways and mm-hmm. the Technomancy. Oh, Michael's amazing. Shout out to Michael. I love you. And if you are listening to this right now and you haven't heard that episode, go it's back a right now. You got to mm-hmm. go back. You got to listen to it. But it changed so much of the energetics for me around the space that I hold online yeah. and what I'm asking of it. And exactly like you said, Michelle, the like not asking too much and not giving too much without consent, Mm -hmm. without it being reciprocal, without understanding there is a balance, there is its own language. Mm -hmm. And that language of the digital space, when you like listen, is very informative. It gives a lot of information. Mm -hmm. I'm just really curious because we haven't actually talked about it. When I was like, anyways, here's this huge project. Go have fun. How did you go about like researching and figuring out how to implement a digital altar in a more specific way than we have been for the past three years since I I tasked you with that work? Well, I think it started with really identifying what felt easiest. Mm. I have a new motto, which is like the easy, find ease, Mm. really try and make everything as full of ease as possible. And so when I first started out trying to view this as a digital altar, for me, it was more about what is asking to be created right now? What is so close to the surface that it would be like a shame for me not to to pick it up and, and mm-hmm. use it. And so at the time we were in launch for North Node. And because I was a member of North Node for six months leading up to that, it was just too easy. You know, it was just one of those things where the content was there and all it took was me making sure that I was fully grounded in, for me, it really felt like the four elements. That was the biggest Mm -hmm. thing that really carried me through was making sure that there was a balance between water and fire and air and earth. And so that was my first sort of container that I put for myself was how can we ground launch content in the elemental energies because it was so accessible. Mm. After that, it became more inside voice and it became more fun. So part of that really felt like what was exciting energy. And so part of that was really looking at like, what are our patron saints? How does Mercury show up? Mercury, depending on who you talk to, rules so many different things. And so it was so easy to use the texture of paper behind an image Mm -hmm. that was like layered, creating transparency through the image above. So you can see, you know, the paper underneath that carries all Mm -hmm. of that to Mercury that represents that written sort of realm without having to write anything on the image. Mm -hmm. And so I started the container was small when I started. And then as the idea started to evolve, Michelle, you gave such good direction and there were so many amazing coded language that was used that got the vibe across right away. Things like hibiscus sweet tea. That's the vibe we're going for, right? We want it to be cool. And when there was a heat wave, we were focusing on water protection 
amplification of hydration and cooling vibes because that was what where we live in the Pacific Northwest and on the West Coast. That's what we needed at that time. And it was a way for us to really steep ritual and magic within like all of our content. Yeah, that was so fun to see you take all these ideas and also kind of a framework of, all right, we've got this altar. So here's what we can work with. We can work with like our bio and what emojis are in our bio and what our highlights are that are like literally that's on our altar. Right. And then the rest of our altar is the feed. So what's on that? Like, what are we messaging there? How are we cleaning it up and making sure that it's like the best, the freshest, the most lovely makes the most sense. And then our petitions, like what are we petitioning for and how, how does that show up in our stories or how are we giving offerings every day and sort of tasking you with that and being like, good luck, see you later. And seeing you pull that was so fun. And I think that you used the, the word coded. That's what makes business fun. And what makes business intuitive is like, you don't have to be so obvious about all this shit. It doesn't have to be also like a super heavy lift. It can be the little secrets that like only, you know, the little sigils that you put into an email or the, I don't know, the phrase that you use over and over again that you've imbued with magic, the spell that you have cast. You don't have to say, this is a motherfucking spell. You can just do it. You know, like that's fun. That's the point. What's actually really fun is when it starts to work. And when you see, oh, okay, this thing went viral. Interesting. Oh, then that's what we wanted it to do. Oh, we wanted people to feel like this is a calm, cool, easy place to rest. And to hear our words basically come out of other people's mouths has been like so cool. Magic's real. Anyway, that's it. And I, just to follow that up, I will say once we started really getting in a groove with our digital altar and we started to really honor sort of those almost like milestones or checkpoints along the way. It was fascinating to see how we would put out content and the following week it would be everywhere. Mm-hmm. Like in in the in the zeitgeist. And that is all because we were honoring our truth and like listening to what was showing up in our spaces. Notion for magical baddies with squiggly brains was like a, a breakthrough moment. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I feel bad for anyone listening who's like, okay, but then how do I replicate it? Like, fuck, just (laughs) like, that's so annoying to just say like, be in flow. But, but I think that that's the point, right? It's like you practice being in flow. Like it's conscientious. It's like intentional. You, I don't think that you accidentally get in flow. Just like, I don't think you accidentally like become successful or you accidentally fall in love or you like accidentally learn things. I think that you, you're aiming towards it. Your intention is there. I was thinking about when you said the four elements, I was like, you're like the fifth element, that which animates the four elements. <laughs> have you guys I, seen that movie? It's, yes. Yes. <laughs> I mean, I have to say that when I had orange hair, that was like the number one reference I got. There you oh, go. fifth it element. You, and you had orange hair when you first started a host. Yeah, you're the yeah. fifth element state. It's weird, though, how many people will just like walk by me and instead of saying anything, I'll just go hair. And I'm always like, that's such a weird statement to say. But thank you. <laughs> yeah, it is so interesting how also because I'm I'm the main character in my own story. Oh, my God. To- Michelle and I literally <laughs> planned a quarter around this theory yesterday. <laughs> Truly. <of content. laughs> I was trying to explain it to Ethan at like 10 o'clock at night. And he was just like. I don't think I get it. (laughs) I was like, you got to be there. Okay. (laughs) So for all people listening, that is an example right there of how to pay attention. I bring it up. You just had a conversation about it yesterday. You tried to explain it to Ethan. You're planning a quarter around it. It's being like immediately mirrored back as like, yes, you're being met with the same energy. And so to all people listening, that's what it actually looks like right now. What just happened? Beautiful example. I want to hear about what plot point is happening for you right now in your story. What's happening? So I was listening to the episode where sort of introducing this concept of like multiplicity and digital altar keeping. And, you know, it's so interesting when I heard my my name on the podcast episode, how fascinating it can be when like you're your own main character and all you're thinking about is like your lane, what you're doing. And as soon as you can see it from an external point or you hear it from someone else and it's like reflected back to you, it's almost like those moments where 
you miss it. You miss the how in flow you are because you're just in flow and you're just enjoying it and you're just creating. And so sometimes you do have to like take a moment and like take intentionally pat yourself on the back and also be like, and look at this feedback I'm getting. Because Mm -hmm. as one of my creative coaches once told me, if it's not working, that is information. Mm -hmm. Can we try something else? If it's not working, don't just keep doing the same thing and wait till it works. Have a conversation with someone, get that mirror. Quick little break for our sponsor, Open. Open is a digital mindfulness studio for everyone. And I was kind of expecting it to be like every other digital mindfulness app and meditation app out there. But when I logged in for my first class, it was honestly like, nothing else I'd ever experienced. It was a phenomenal experience. It is so unexpected and delightful. And it's also a beautiful background experience. The vibes and the aesthetics are immaculate and it makes you feel immediately like, oh, I'm in the right place. I can breathe. Classes are available in the open app and on the desktop. There are fresh classes every day. So you can take on-demand classes. You can take live classes. You can get started with your meditation or breath work or just morning self-care, afternoon self-care, whenever you want self-care routine. And you get your first 30 days for free when you join using the code holisticism at checkout. We'll put a link below in our show notes. So if you want to meditate with us and really take advantage of that group sesh vibe, It's really fun to meditate together because accountability, but you just got to try it. Truly go look at it. It will blow your mind and I can't wait to hear what you think. So I'll see you in class. I think that's one of the really nice things about the internet too, though, is you'll get that feedback really quickly. So you can get a sense of what people are vibing with and not vibing with really quickly. And if you can remember it as information, this is advice I would love to take myself. But if you can see it as information versus criticism and move on from there, you can get instant feedback, which is harder to get from people in real life. Yes. Straight up, people lie. People want to like protect your feelings. And that's so nice of them. So when you ask for feedback, they're like, it was good. It was so good. Great. But you know what people really think. That's like one of my favorite things about content is that you get through the bullshit really fast. It's not that you guys know I don't deal well with passive aggressivity. I like when people are specific and clear. And that's kind of the beautiful thing about content. If no one clicks on your shit, that means it's not good. Or it means that you need to change the way that you set it up so that maybe try again. Maybe it's not the content. Maybe it's the image. Maybe it's the text. Maybe it's the color. Maybe it's You get to play. It's all just play, though. And I think that sometimes we misconstrue feedback with the algorithm bullying us. And I understand why that could be confusing, because we've been told a lot of things about the algorithm and about its power. And I don't think that we always understand how much is really like what the algorithm's intention is. The algorithm's intention is to make Instagram money and to keep people on the app and to get people to click through and engage. And if you understand those rules, then I think it makes a lot more sense than you realize it's not exactly out to get you. Although, admittedly, algorithms are biased because they're created by people. Definitely read the book Algorithms of Depression if you want to double click on this concept. It's a bit academic, but I strongly recommend it. And we know that some content does get banned, particularly like sex workers on Instagram have a really hard time getting their their content seen. So there are some use cases where that is true, but I think for the majority of people and small businesses that are online, the algorithm is not out to get you. Well, there is something to be said about there is a ghost in all machines, right? One of my favorite books on the subject is The Racist Roots of New Technology, which is by Ruha Benjamin, but they're biased. They are created by people. They are not impartial, neutral action-based systems and it's not perfect but if all of us are hanging out on the internet if all of us are on instagram then we have to somehow meet it in the middle and i agree i don't think the algorithm is specifically out to get anyone and this is verbal permission for anyone who has been not creating because of fear of the algorithm not liking them create anyways it doesn't matter and it is all information it might be that you are not 
in a trendy wormhole that is going to catapult you to the top of the for you page. But is that what you want? I know people that have gone viral for things that have nothing to do with what they're doing and it actually hurts their business Mm -hmm. because all of a sudden they have 12,000 new followers that are not there for the right reasons. Mm -hmm. And that's where, you know, boundaries and protections are so important. But I think the algorithm is just, it's an inside voice thing. It doesn't really have to affect the content we're creating. I also think it's a cultural mirror, right? It's always mirroring back to us what's happening in culture. It is racist. And yep. there's always going to be a new algorithm. With TV, it's the networks. With radio, it was the broadcasting companies. With newspaper, it's the people who own the newspapers. So it's just morphing, and we can't really get away from it. So it's always going to exist in a new form, and it's just mirroring back culture and where cult- culture culture (laughs) needs to evolve and needs to transform so we're always in a constant dialogue with it and we're not going to be able to ever be without it so it's like how do you work with it and the other thing I just like that I've witnessed in my own life is that if you're putting up static posts and you think you're a great writer and Michelle like you said nobody likes it nothing happens with it Could you try recording a video? Are you more energetically connected to your message verbally or through video or through memification? Like, are you trying to play to the desires of the quote unquote algorithm? Or are you just creating from a place of like, Mm -hmm. this feels good? And your little bubble. Like, are you are you creating within your little echo chamber? Because sometimes it's hard to realize that you're creating within the standards of an echo chamber that you're like, maybe this is not the place I want to be. And I need to leapfrog out of here. Yeah. I think that's where perfectionism comes in. Like we can give permission to all the cows come home to like try new things, be different. But that like vice grip of perfectionism on intuition and creativity, I think stops us before we even realize that's what's happening that we're like, we've been stunted or that we're, we're running into a wall or we're making the same things over and over again, or we're afraid to say what we really think or show up differently than how people might expect because we're afraid of getting punished. And the cool thing about Instagram or anything on the internet really is that you can always delete that shit. You can just get rid of it. Like there's no need to be precious. We're just getting information. So you can rapid prototype with the content that you put out and you could even say the same thing four different ways, see which one performs the best and get rid of all the other stuff. That's how you learn. And that's how you learn magic, right? You like try a, you try a money spell a hundred different ways. You do a candle spell. Then you like take your period blood and you mix it with some dirt and you make a sigil and you're like, well, this one's really crazy, but let's just see what happens. Then you put a hundred (laughs) dollar bill on your altar and you're like, which one is going to hit? And then something finally does. And then you can retrace your steps and say, okay, what fault? real about that what felt good about that and you keep building upon it just like cells aren't static either like knowledge isn't static it's all growing and changing and evolving over time with the information that we feed it and for all the menstruating people mixing your period blood with dirt is definitely the most powerful way to go 100 (laughs) feet this is not an ad for the cup but like uh we wouldn't be opposed so like flex call us great way to give back to mother nature yep and one of the notes that we had written in our in our prep for this episode was about co-creating and i think that that is the thing to take with you when looking at creating in systems that have an algorithm is like that's an invitation to co-create mm-hmm. that's true and to co-create with the algorithm and with your community. I think, that, I mean, I'm assuming that's what you're alluding to, but like yeah. you get to learn from what people tell you they want and they want more of, and you don't have to just do what they say. You get to like take that and metabolize it and be like, all right, you say you want bread. Well, I don't want to make bread. I want to make bagels. They're both carbs. So let's do bagels instead and like see what happens. Before we go, we should talk about archetypes too, because that was a really important component of being able to show up to the altar and like make the space for the altar. I would argue that we probably wouldn't be where we're at and be feel open sharing if we didn't have archetypes because otherwise, and I actually, maybe this is something that I had to get over, which was I am totally re- replaceable and I can hire someone to take on this job and do it even better than I can. When I remember that all I'm doing, all we're doing is embodying an archetype. 
And anyone can embody an archetype, especially an archetype that we co-create together. Someone can't become me, but you and I, you know, Stacy Wallace, we, all of us could try to be the archetype of our quarter three, which I feel like Stace has better examples of our archetype. Well, the notes that the head witch in charge sent my way were that we're going for the vibe of kooky art ant. That is our archetype. Some of the, let me just find this here. We had some notes around like what colors she vibes with. So if you think about your kooky art aunt, she's got a scarf that's red. She's got shoes that are like hot pink leather. They're yeah. vintage. She's got a hat with multicolored embroidery on. There's a little bit of purple because she's a witch, obviously. <laughs> but like take Stevie Nicks and like, throw her in a 70s crocheted blanket and that mm -hmm. is what we were going for yes is stevie nicks wore pants <laughs> yes a few things about our kooky art and archetype i'll just drop them here she gives great advice without giving a shit no facts <laughs> no she's got unique rituals that she sticks to and practices no matter what with absolutely no shame and my favorite note of all of them is fuck the man man no bra, no problem. <laughs> and truly, Michelle sent me that that brief, and there were some images that went with it. Imagine your kookiest art aunt studio. That's what it looked like. It was amazing. But truly, that archetype, I've known that person. I've had that art teacher. I have... I, I, I will be that aunt one day. It made so much of the, the questions that I would have had for you around, does this work? Does this vibe? Is this what we're going for? It answered all those questions. She also That's smells right. like patchouli, I would say. Mm -hmm. And a little bit of weed because she's always a <laughs> token, you know, in the morning. I yep. just pictured the kooky art aunt definitely like pouring out her period blood in the garden, you know, like singing a song on Saturday morning, like while all of the family is like, there she like goes again. <laughs> yep. What's she doing? She's giving an offering to the garden gnomes. Okay, great. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> and it really allows it to be a little bit less pensive, right? There's like not as much hesitation. There's not as much questioning because it is all through her lens, we are going to be switching into Q4 and we will have a new archetype, but it has been so fun creating from the place of her and She's her got one magic. One month. Yeah. yeah. Let it flow, baby. Totally. And then we're like embodying like, well, I, whenever we hit like Libra or like Scorpio season, I just imagine like a really aesthetic goth. Oh, yeah. Well, stay tuned, guys. <laughs> Yeah, maybe we should put up our archetype mood board for Q3 so people get an idea of what we talked about. Yeah, I think also having an archetype protects you because when we put and create our digital, when we put our identities completely vulnerably online, we are not protected, right? And that's what people are afraid of when, when perfectionism comes in, getting canceled, getting criticized, and you can't blame people for that. I'm, I feel the same way. I feel like scared often to reveal my like full, full, full self. But when you can break it down into yourself, down into the archetypes that you embody, that you can embody whenever you feel like it, you create this character that's protected. Just like Lady Gaga, very early in her career, was a character, right? And she was intentional about the character that she created. She's had and, so many good ones. Like yeah. right after A Star is Born, she was all on Ugh. this like natural brown haired, like country singer tip that was a yeah. moment One and then she favorite. moved on you know I miss teacup Lady Gaga when she would have a teacup with her constantly that was great I yeah. feel like she's come back around isn't she, she is, kinda... she's kind of getting back into her costumes which her I feel like yeah. bodes well for us like yeah. I would love to know what archetype she's embodying right now mm. that makes me think that there's something coming because <laughs> she does this usually like yep. either pre or post like work binge so mm -hmm. I'm very excited mm -hmm. yeah I got chills for all people who want a little like maybe throwback to the Lady Gaga moment art pop is truly oh, superb. for all you Just monsters out there yeah we'll be hosting a new Lady Gaga podcast Lady right. Gaga is actually our archetype anyways that's our big news yeah, yeah. I'm like wait should Lady Gaga be our archetype our patron safe works I have a cue for you guys what are your personal 
online archetypes presently or future? Mm. Do you have any? Of course I have them. Let me pull up my notes. I know you do. <laughs> <Not fucking hard>. <laughs> <laughs> so right now, the archetype that I'm embodying on my as a as a person online is the observer. Oh, like yeah. a librarian? Like studious? Like the seer. That's or like the, the, <laughs> the person who almost like the scribe, the person who watches oh, what scribe. happens and they like record what's happening mm-hmm. through observation. Like the raven in Game of Thrones? Exactly. That is a hundred percent it. The wall Whoa. like if you're a nineties kid, the wallflower. But that is where I'm at right now only because I feel like the world specifically online has so much to teach me right now. Like mm-hmm. lessons are abounding. So I'm right now the observer online. I love that. Love that. The shadow is the voyeur, which you can't really get. Stuck in. <laughs> no, that's a, I've been that's there. A, I've yeah. definitely been there. It's not a fun place to be the voyeur. Mm-hmm. I feel like the voyeur is like when you go through a really bad breakup, you become the voyeur. Cause you're just, or maybe it's just me. You're just like stalking your ex relentlessly and like every single person who they Venmo. And is that just me? Do, am I the only one who does that? I'm like, and you can't like show up online. Doesn't because turn you're just off watching. that Venmo. Like if you haven't turned that shit off, I don't know. Yeah. I'm like, who, why are you paying Amanda for sandwiches? <laughs> like who's Amanda? And what? Yeah. I have to say as a Canadian, I have no idea what you're talking about. Do you know what um, Venmo is? I know what it is, but I don't understand how you can see someone else's it. activity. It's this really silly so when I first realized it I was like this is savage I'm turning this off immediately so no one can see who I'm paying for what and most people don't turn it off like it's public information whoever you follow unless you turn it off but I don't think people realize that yeah you have to make it private it's it's totally savage I feel like many marriages have been broken up over Venmo I was going to say, I, I could see this being a really problematic. Well, also because people usually, instead of writing what they're paying for, it's like some coded emoji. Mm-hmm. So you can really read into things. Yeah. And like 90% of the time when I'm Venmoing someone, I say for sex. It's yeah. not funny because like what everyone does that. But yeah, it can get really dangerous really fast. Wow. That's fascinating. And mm-hmm. that is that is peak voyeur energy for sure. True. It's so true. That's right. I've definitely been the voyeur. Star. Yeah. I've got three archetypes. I usually dress for my archetype and I pick my archetype like depending on the day, like what I need to do in that day and how I'm feeling. But I think that mostly of like the archetype that's coming through on Instagram and social media is my power editor. So just because like that's what a power editor would do is like show up and be pretty like sharp and specific on IG. And I've got a couple others that I'm embodying creative genius prolific visionary mercurial magician but my power editor is like just kind of like if Miranda Priestley was like nice and sharp and witty and fashionable and focused and clear so like when I'm embodying her I wear clothes that are fitted and tailored to my body as opposed to like more sort of relaxed no athleisure sometimes no bra but like usually a bra I also wear makeup and my cat eye sunglasses that's my power editor so that's really easy for me. I just find it easier when I'm her to to say things on the internet right now, as opposed to like the other two. I've tried making some content as the other two and I'm just like not feeling it. So I'm going with that. On a personal level, I'll say that my archetype is the cool LA kid right now. <laughs> oh, love this. Nice. So your wallet. Yes, a hundred percent. Totally. I'm like, I like gave myself curtain bangs, gave myself a wolf cut. I started like buying like extra large shirts. You know, I bought like, yeah, exactly. You literally are describing Wallace. Yeah. Wait, that's like, my archetype, guys? I was about to say I'm the explorer child. Which is the wild thorn berries. Yes, that's exactly it. That's like what I think of when I think of like cool 90s kid is like, yeah, the wild thorn berries running around. Just, it's great with Wallace's hair. <laughs> I think I'm, my archetype is the 90s skateboarder poser. I like that. I'm working poser. through the poser part. I'm just assimilating. <laughs> you got to learn how to skateboard, Wallace. Exactly, exactly. Wallace, we should go skateboarding. We should. We're going to camp, aren't we? I've already oh, yeah. We're going awesome. to camp. We're doing a, we've decided. We're doing a team skateboarding event in That's Portugal. Cute. So, oh, my God. I'll be there. Yeah. You were invited. <laughs> I will be there. I will be. I don't know if I'm a skateboarder, but... I make a really good margarita, so 
for post skate sesh. <laughs> Listen, that. think about it. If 13 year old boys can learn how to skateboard, you can fucking learn how to skateboard. Trust yeah. me. Yeah. I think for me, it's more that after watching the Olympics, I can see why the 13 year olds win because the 30 year olds <laughs> hit the pavement and you're just like, oh, you're going to need physio, chiro, cupping. Like, you're going to need it all. That 13 year old kid is just like a bounces back, like, whoa, let's go again. <laughs> That's true. The women, I love watching them. So badass. I love it. That could be an archetype 13 year old Olympic skateboarder archetype. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that could be. They're a little, little, they're cool. Mm-hmm. Well, we've gone, we've gone a bit off the rails. We have. <laughs> I was going to say info bomb for you. Later, just put together a very large piece of data points for all of us online, on Instagram, doing the thing. And so I just want to let people know that if you are feeling a bit down about your engagement, try taking some time off. Try stepping away and coming back to it because what we are finding through social circles and feedback that I'm getting from other um, people who work in the, in the field is that when we post consistently, we tell Instagram that we love being there. When we take time away from Instagram, Instagram feels like, Oh my God, I'm boring. They're not interested and they will actually do things to promote what you're doing to more of your audience. So if you're feeling like your engagement is low, take some time off and then come back and Instagram will reward you, which that's a little hack. Just just a little info bomb for all y'all out there. You do not have to be doing it consistently if you don't want. Gaslight the gaslighter. 100%. Like they're truly gaslighting us. But yeah. that is just a piece of information is if you're overwhelmed by how much content you have to create, you actually don't have to create content all the time. I like that. Thank you so much, Stacey, for speaking your wisdom into the airwaves and sharing it with our whole crew. We love you so much. You're such a delight and a gem. I love being here. Thank you so much. The team is great. I'm so pumped. Can't wait to be a part of it. Shout out to the IG community that I talk to every single day in the DMs. You are all so amazing. Yeah. And I'm so excited for all of you to experience the digital altars course oh we didn't even talk about that you're all gonna love it yeah digital altars course is gonna be so fun because we're gonna talk about all the magic stuff that we talked about here in theory and also like practical application and we're gonna do it all in notion so if you are learning about notion if you're already obsessed with notion and you want a system to be able to make content magically on the internet then it's gonna be for you and it's quick and dirty too it's only two weeks so it is I was about to say fast and loose. It's not going to be loose at all. It's going to be fast and tight. <laughs> Short and sharp. <laughs> and fun. Mostly and fun. Extremely fun. Extremely fun. Exactly. Yes, there will, be, there will be tests on memes. So how is that not fun? That's it. Come for the memes. Stay for the fun. <laughs> and create some magic along the way. We'll see you next week on the pod. We're going to be talking about something great. Something great. Just stay tuned. And that's the show. I hope that you loved it. I can't wait to hear your questions and hear what you think. And obviously, you've definitely fallen in love with Stacey and Wallace because they're both amazing. And this is the last day that you can enter our giveaway and win a sweatshirt from Holisticism, a small sweatshirt. So to win, enter to win, you need to rate, review, and subscribe to the podcast, send a screenshot of your review to the text line below, and we will select one lucky winner to get a spell sweatshirt or any of the sweatshirts that are in our shop right now. They're a limited edition. This is the last time that we're going to make them. They are made to order, so there are a finite amount, and may the luckiest person win. Thanks for listening. Thanks for tuning in. Thank you for supporting us. You are the best. I appreciate you and everything that you do and who you are. I hope you have the best day ever, and I will see you on the internet. Bye.